Oh, here it is. Here, hey, hey, we're live, Bobby. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. And we are live. Just figuring this all out as we go on week number 92. <laughs> right. So uh, welcome again, uh, Facebook family and friends uh, for the, the Becker Vineyard virtual tasting. Uh, week 92, the white grown varietal tasting today. Um, this is exciting to share these wonderful wines with everybody uh, once again. Um, so uh, tonight uh, we have, uh, as our honored guest, we have our owner, Dr. Richard Becker. Uh, we have our uh, lovely winemaker, John Leahy, and then uh, myself, Bobby Totten. And the ones that we have light, lined out tonight, uh, we have the 2019 Prairie Cuvée. Uh, we have the 2018 Roussan and then the 2019 RVM, uh, and it will be in that order. Uh, so uh, if you have your glasses ready, have them filled up, ready to go, or or uh, uh, or if you just go and buy glass, I mean, let's just uh, start off with that uh, Prairie Cuvée, and I'd love to pass this over to Dr. Richard Becker with uh, some uh, wonderful words from our owner. I wish I had wonderful words. A, a, a million, a million new cases in one day with this with this new variant. Uh, it's maybe it's it's less uh, less virulent, but it's certainly more transmissible, and and the hospitalizations are up uh, again terribly. Um, just this terrible overwork of our medical community. Uh, all I can say is my heart's out to you, and uh, thank you. And um, I, again, we have another. Another week to taste wonderful wines that John has made. Uh, especially this lineup is going to be fun, I think. But anyway, our, our hearts out to all the people fighting this battle. And we need to get everybody vaccinated. Just, just keep thinking about it if you're not vaccinated. It's the right thing to do. All right, let's, let's talk, talk about the wines. Absolutely. But somebody just said that their, um, their package had the 2015 Prairie Cuvée. Yeah, 20, okay. 2019. Yeah, somebody said they had the 2015. That'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and uh, join us with the 2015. I'd like to hear how it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> Please. And I, I think we can we can correct that for you. It might be a little late, but we'll get you the right one. Uh, and then we can revisit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, I, every time I smell this, the Prairie Cuvée, um, I, I get just a hint of almost licorice edge, like licorice root. Hmm. What do you think, Bobby? Yeah, no, definitely. I, I get that almost that um, almost the, that floral or the uh, it's kind of like a yeah, that dried anise kind of uh, characteristic um, yeah. licorice root. Maybe dried fennel. Yeah, fennel, right? Yeah. How about peach? Um, wonderful peach notes for me. Definitely. Yeah, this wine is awfully light for being a red wine. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think you missed something there, sir. <laughs> uh. It's got, I, you know, the Prairie Cuvée has the body of a medium bodied red wine. That's just what cracks me up. Yeah. This has got to be one of the most bodied white wines. I, you know, the Prairie Cuvée has the body of a medium bodied red wine. That's just what cracks me up. That's a. <laughs> Sorry. There. It's worth saying twice if it's worth saying once. <laughs> it was a good point. Yeah. It was a great point. <laughs> no, I, I, oh. I agree. I mean, the, the depth. And how it lingers. Okay, I mean, how... we have several people that have gotten the 2015 instead of the 2019. They're lucky people. Yes. They are, because I wish we had any any left over here. <laughs> you must have got the rest of it. Oh, Lane, yes, Lane. Yellow squash actually is a perfectly acceptable term. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Uh, I just, I love the complexity of the Prairie Cuvée on the nose. Um, yeah. Yeah. Both vintages display a good complexity. So I, I am sorry that you got the 2015. 
Um, you'll have to suffer through. I'm sure it won't be too hard. <laughs> but, um, certainly contact, uh, contact the shipping you know, wine club tomorrow and we'll get it corrected for you guys. Yeah, we'll take care of that. So yeah, wine absolutely. club at beckerwines.com. We will uh, we'll make sure you get those, uh, those wines for you. Hmm. What the 15, I believe, is 54% Marson, 46% Rousson on mm -hmm. the bottle, on the label. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, however, it's 47% Rousson, 47% Marson, and 6% Viognier. Correct. Yeah. Um, That's a great Rhone blend. <laughs> well, it, it, it is a nice, nice white Rhone. Um, and I'm <laughs> already thinking cassoulet, so I'm just saying it out loud. <laughs> Somebody I know hasn't eaten yet today. Uh, it was, uh, I never forget a November day uh, in uh, the top of the Rhone Valley uh, uh, in you know, San Joseph. Uh, we found a little restaurant with Tom and Lisa Perini mm -hmm. and out, and uh, you know, very just a very wonderful, but you know, it's physically unimpressive. But the the, the cassoulet that we had with this this combination of wine, primarily Marsan. Uh, just absolutely stands out in my memory. I love the fact that if you really want to start a great argument between two Frenchmen, ask them what, what is the correct cassoulet recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clueless. but uh... Uh, I am too, to tell you the truth, but I've heard so many of them argue about cassoulet. It's, been, it's kind of funny. Uh, Jody's asking that we mail some to her, and I think that's a great idea. <laughs> well, Oh, Jody. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, aren't you supposed to be working? <laughs> isn't that like 3.30 over there right now? <laughs> What's this early off stuff? <laughs> a coffee break. A wine break, yeah. Uh, right, right. Well, she, <laughs> I, I got a great picture of old Route 66 today, so I'm, I was kind of happy. Oh, um, that's so cool. Yeah, boy. Hmm. Yeah, that um, that's got a great body. What kind of uh, besides peach, Doc? What else are you picking up in there? Well, anise and um, the, the other things you guys were mentioning, um, some herbal notes. Um, what is the herbal character here, John? What what do you or, or Bobby? What do you what do you think that is? Anise, maybe, but um... you know, it it's funny because. Um, that, that anise or fennel, like Bobby said earlier, yep. is certainly uh -huh. relevant yeah. there, but I, I get a little linden flower. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, it really is right there. And it, it's hard to explain unless somebody has a comparative scent to it. And I apologize for getting so esoteric, but, and the herbaceousness, summer savory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, uh, a little savory, um, yeah, well, it's kind of nice. <laughs> Somebody's day started at 5.30. I saw that. <laughs> I recommend you call John and let him know you're heading out the door. You know, just... <laughs> uh, thanks, Doc. <laughs> hmm. Now, I, I, I remember getting fresh loquats off of uh, trees growing up and I kind of get a little hint of that in here as well right oh you know um it's it's almost like an over ripened uh, citrus zest uh-huh yeah. Yeah. yeah like an orange peel that's not that's like uber ripe um so almost to the point of, of being obnoxious, but it's just a hint of that. <laughs> oh, Lynn, Lynn asked a very nice question. Uh, what is the characteristic of a Viognier that benefits these two grapes besides tradition? <laughs> what do you think? Well, some of it would be the, the, uh, the stone fruit, the peach and um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you um, that Viognier has an incredible floral note to it. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's it's much more floral than the Marsan or the Roussan, mm -hmm. um, where the, uh, you know, Marsan's almost, or the Roussan is almost a honeycomb, um, waxy edge to it. Uh, it's very yep. deeper, deeper note. Uh, right. Marsan's right. got much more herbaceousness to it. So um, the the uh, characteristic phenolics of the, of the Marsan are, are, are much, much more aligned, honestly, like a red grape. Um, something that would have a little more terpene to the edge of it, even though there's no skin contact on it. So the floral notes, um, the little bit of Viognier helps accentuate the subdued floral notes from the other two varietals. Um, it also offers, to be honest, it'll lighten up the palate a little bit. And I think we'll see that yeah. Um, yeah. when we go to, to the RVM later, um, and we'll, we'll compare back to these. So all three of these blends uh, are, you know, Rhone whites, so that it'll be fun to isolate back and forth. Oh, completely. I think, uh, I mean, I'm getting a little hint of oak on the finish. Mm -hmm. You should. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of like yeah. mix up right in there. Yeah, it's it's a lot, lot. But I used an awful lot of French oak in this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that vanilla and that uh, mm. little bit of cinnamon, just a hint of cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. Does this go through Mallow? Um, actually, the uh, I believe the Roussan went through Mallow. I don't think the Viognier or the Marsan did. Okay. Um, it, yeah, so mm -hmm. I guess, you know, with a handy device that's connected to the cloud, I could probably look up the blend <laughs> comp. Uh, I wasn't so lazy. Um, uh, look up that for you. Because it just, it tastes so bright. Uh, and does have that. Mm, excuse me. God bless you. But uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of that body right on the on the finish. Yeah. But yeah, it, that's beautiful. Mm. All right, there we go. Here to this would love a little Dungeness crab in the background. Oh, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, it did go through. Um, yeah, the other two did not. The it, but the Sean did go through the mallet, the ML fermentation. Okay, we need to liven things up a little bit because I'm getting really anxious to try this uh, 18 Roussan. I'm with you, Bill. Uh -oh. mm, great nose, huh? Yeah. This has, a, you know, we always think of Brosan as being sort of beeswax and, and herbal tea. And this has got pear, peach, lime. Uh, okay. Amazing. White flower. Is it blended a little bit, John? How, how did it? Um... Yeah, there is just a a hint of a younger vintage in here. Hold on, Doc, I'm gonna get that for you. Uh, wow. This is a grape that we think probably originated in the Northern world. It's named for the the reddish, the roux, R-O-U-X in French, uh, color of the grapes when they're fully ripe, develop on the skin. That's why it's called Roussan. Right. Um, and it's um, one of two white, along with Marsan, that's blended with some of the red red wines in, in, the, in the Northern Road. This this is 100% Roussan, uh, the 18. More. It does have 1% uh, of the um, 19 vintage in it. So. Uh, I'm gonna dark. I'm gonna mute myself and darken out my video for just. Okay. Okay. Now uh, the the beautiful like lime zest or lime that I'm getting off of uh, the nose is just it's really wonderful. The Rasan is uh, as far as drinking, people recommended recommended that the windows open in the first four years, and then after fifteen. 
Really? Uh, I'd like to see what John says about that. But um, uh, yeah, here we're in the we're in the in the early window, but it's beautiful right now. Um, when I think about this grape, I, I like to think about the the. This is one of the famous suitcase vineyards in France. Randall Graham brought back a suitcase of cuttings from from uh, Chateauneuf du Pop and 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 planted the great Bonnie Dune Roussan planting, and uh, uh, apparently it was okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, we haven't done that, have we, John? That I know about, or don't know. No, about. we have not broken the agricultural laws of the United States, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though I admire it, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, no, I well, you know, there are a lot of uh, not a lot, but there are quite a few stories about how some of these varietals came to be here in the U.S. and uh -huh. it's the passion of the people. Yeah, you know, found something they really, really liked, wanted to try it. Um, they're I, I think it's interesting. So I caught coming in, you said that, you know, the window closes after a few years and then opens back up at about year 15. And that would be a, I don't think I've ever tried a Roussan that old, to tell you the truth. So I would be really interesting to, to try that. Um, yeah. I've got some old Marsans uh -huh. uh, from the Rhone uh, right. from, that are 20 years old from, from 2000. Uh, we, well, let's, let's taste those. Uh, they probably okay. have some, some blended with them. Um, it takes me about two hours to get there. No. <laughs> we have a volunteer, a driver. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really, Roussan to me has such a great nose. I, you know, when it's brand spanking new, when we first press it, starts to ferment, it's got such great character. And then it just deepens into this incredible maturity. Um, mm -hmm. And the lime in this show, is that this is the most lime I've seen of ever in Rosa. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a yeah, there is a fair amount in there. They get lime leaf, a little, little like almost lime, a uh, rind of lime. Mm -hmm. I definitely get you know this. This Rusan very much benefited from the new oak that we put it in and aged it in. We didn't do 100% new oak, but we did a fair amount of new French oak and then some neutral French oak for this. And we kept it in barrel for quite some time. Uh, you know, we, we got it, um, the pH is, is nice and low, you know, 3.5, uh, but it did, it, you know, it stainless steel fermented. We kept it in stainless steel for um, a couple of months before we put it into new oak and aged it for a period of time in the new oak. And that new oak, even though it wasn't in there for two years, that, that new oak um, benefited the, the next generation of the, the Rhones. So it had a little more oak to give and still being a year old. This certainly took some benefit from that. And yes, we did grab it out and we did put it back into stainless. Um, I think it was a, not even a year and a half old when we did that uh, in order to get this in the bottle. So, and it's remained fresh for a number mm -hmm. of years now. Amazing, wonderful. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we we think of this being the Rhone white. Maybe this is the Texas white wine. Maybe this right. blend, uh, th these these grapes, Rosan, Viognier, Marsan. Mm -hmm. uh, right. This might be the white grape in the, for this part of the world. Well, they do very well here in Texas. It's an, it's incredible it's, how well they so, do. Sauvignon Blanc, and so does our, the, the wonderful Chardonnay we've made. I mean, that's... Yes. Uh, uh, maybe we're a white wine region. <laughs> Would that be something? <laughs> it's needed here in Texas with the heat. I mean, <laughs> I, right, right. Mother Nature giving us an out, having a nice chilled glass of wine during the heat of summer, uh, Eight or a degree Christmas. I mean, <laughs> it was on Christmas Day at our house, eighty-seven degrees that afternoon. I know oh, yeah. because somebody made me work out in the garden. This is beautiful. <laughs> Uh, hey, Margaret, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> hearing voices coming from that tapestry. Uh, Doctor, Bobby, you need to get your hearing checked. There are no voices. <laughs> they, these are not the drones you were looking for. <laughs> it, the voices are coming from my glasses and wine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm almost getting like a hint of candle. Oil. 
showcase. Mm -hmm. John, hats off on this wine. I, yes. um, have we sent this to any competitions? Is it? <laughs> yes, oddly enough, we have. And they uh, sent it back. What happened? <laughs> uh, yeah, they marked it, returned to sender. Uh, <laughs> I actually, um, hold on, I may actually be able to pull that up. Um, I think I have right here. Yeah. I can go into, yeah, you, I'm going to have to take a second here. I am pretty sure. Um, RVM. Let's see here. What's the alcohol? It looks like 14.5. 14, 14, okay. Well, we've been sending it out all this year, Doc. Um, I've got to find the spreadsheet with the awards because I know it did pretty well in the, in the Houston, um, but I'm trying to figure out if I don't have the spreadsheet right on here. We haven't, haven't had this year's San Francisco results, have we? Not yet or? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, we're, we're due to get those pretty soon. Know that the RVM got a silver medal at the 2021 San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition. Okay. So then this one went out to it too. Then we've got the results somewhere. I just don't have them on my email. So I will have to look those up. I know it's, it has, because we started sending it out last year towards the tail end of competition season. So it's been going out all this year too. So. This is great. Uh, John, is this better than the, than the 17 that I've, that I've I love. Uh, what do you think? Oh, oh yeah, you you actually uh, the the oh the Roussan? Yeah. yeah. The last Roussan we did was the 15. And yes, okay. it is much better than the 15. I, I will hands down, I think the 18 is a much better vintage than the 15. I agree. Yeah. yeah. The 15's pH was a little higher, so it had a more uh southern uh characteristic on the finish. So um and not as clean as this one. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Gary Clark says, this Roussan just won the gold at the G. Clark competition 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Send him a case. Oh, my goodness. And apparently, uh, working in the garden builds character. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is, yeah, that is delicious. Okay, I um, I really want to, I want to try this RVM, and I hope I'm not rushing things because I want to get back to compare it to right. to the other two. And this one I actually put in the the Som glass that I have. Now, um, oh wow. There are some, there's some notes going on in here. That nose is so cool. That note, yeah, that nose really is giving out a lot, isn't it? This is very complex, very, very mature tasting. Um, and I think, how long in barrel, John, for, for this one? It actually didn't spend that long in barrel, Doc. Uh, the RVM um, was only in barrel a little over 15 months, I think. Uh -huh. um, so it, uh, uh, we put this out, this is in a general marketplace and we wanted to be able to put this out um, as the white counterpart to the GSM, the 18 GSM right. that we were releasing last year. So um, yeah, this, but I tell you what, I, I can say the nose on this is a hell of a lot better now than it was the month after we bottled it. Yeah. That the wine went through some, some pretty strange yes. um, bottle shop. And Ann Woolweaver says she smells apples, and I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. The other thing I get, I get a lot of honeycomb on this one too. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, I, one of my favorite smells is when you go to the beehive and you open it up, and then that's that the warm air that comes out of there and that scent. Um, it's a it's a blend of the honey, the the pheromone of the bee, the 
everything that's just coming out of that hive. It's an incredible scent. And I get hints of beehive in this. Hmm. Plus, when you keep bees, people will leave you alone. I'm just saying. <laughs> They're afraid to come into your yard. <laughs> well, I have to tell you my, my favorite personal beehive story. So a number of years ago, um, I was working at the medical school and um, we had bees in our backyard. And it was um, a, a bright, clear, cold, fairly cold day. It wasn't so cold you couldn't open the hive. It was probably uh, 45 mm -hmm. or 50. Uh, and I was coming from the clinic down, downtown in San Antonio to a conference at the medical school. And I wanted to, for some reason, I wanted to swing by our house and, and look and see what the bees were doing. This was a, a not a good idea. So <clears throat> I had on my mask and I smoked them a little bit and uh, opened the hive and looked in and they were, said, you know, why are you here? It's, you know, et cetera. Sure. And uh, they did invite me to dinner. And I had, uh, I had, you know, obviously probably khaki pants and I had black socks on, but shoes. And, oh, no. you know, tie and and whatnot, and uh, so then I went to uh, a, a, a conference at the medical school. I was sitting in the dark, and there's a lecture going on with slides and so forth. And all of a sudden, I realized that uh, there are several bees on each. Uh, they're attracted to black, wow. so they and this they didn't like having to be out of the hive on this kind of crisp day. They zeroed in on my socks, and in each leg, I probably had five or six bees now crawling up my leg. Oh my God. This actually, this really happened. And uh, I felt that, I felt the first one, and, and I figured it out, and I sort of kind of gave him a squeeze and terminated him. And then that, that sent a message to the others that maybe it's time to get, get busy stinging. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, no. So, what everyone wants to do at a medical school conference is take their pants off and run out of the room. And uh, this was this was my great opportunity, but I quietly assassinated about eight or ten bees, <laughs> and uh, waited for the waited for the lights to come on. <laughs> oh, oh, no. But you you had to be there. But um, right. <laughs> You know, I swell up horribly when I get stung by honeybees, not by wasps, not by anything, the honeybee, though the, the site just swells and stays swollen for a couple of days. Uh -huh. yeah. no, no other reaction to it, but I, it's almost apparent, immediately apparent to me when I get stung. <laughs> wow. uh, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> The speaker then turned the lights were on and said, any questions? I, no questions. I don't have any questions. I, no, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's that is awesome. That's <laughs> that is such a cool story. Yeah, there's some I, I'm gonna agree with Lane. There's some minerality here. Yeah. Yeah. And this wine loves big in this in this glass, John. You're yes. you're exactly right. It makes yeah. it it's it's dramatically different in this glass. It is. Yeah, and Lane, Lane's right. I was getting that it was kind of a, a citrus or like a like a, a tropical fruit note, that mango. Right. No. Like right there on the nose. Yeah, hey, I think we should send uh, next week's selection to Jody's office. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, call him when you he wants a wake up call when you get up in the morning. I think that's a good I, idea. I'm two hours ahead of her. I'm already at work by the time she's getting up. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. So where do you think on um, Bobby, the finish of this wine? Describe what you get on the palate. Yeah, that red is all. Mm -hmm. Just as I'm exhaling, that just that the, the notes of, of the barrel are just kind of finishing it out, rounding it out, and it just it's really cool. I mean, definitely getting a little bit of the the anise and a, a little bit of uh, almost like a 
a toasted uh, a toasted caramel edge, um, uh, almost toffee like characteristic. Right. Uh, it's it's really cool. I mean, I'm just kind of going through the different layers that it's just expressing itself, and it's just uh, it's really fun. Yeah, and I think Heather, I, I agree with you on that almost licorice note. That's coming from the. Um, I I truly believe that's coming from the. Um, Roussan, or I'm sorry, the Marsan. Marsan, yeah. yeah. Right. The, uh, yeah, the, the orange zest note, the, uh, mm -hmm. the wax notes, the herbal notes. Uh, boy. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun to make these wines, three separate, you know, mm -hmm. varietals, yeah. and then be able to do these different blends. And John, have you made, have we bottled some Marsan as a bridal or no? No, we have not bottled a Marsan as a single varietal. Marsan takes a couple of years to come into its own on mm -hmm. its own. And yeah. We certainly can. Um, you know, if you let me keep it in the barrel for a while, I'd be happy to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do actually, you know, we can go through them too. Um, yeah. We've not done just the, just the single components, um, trying to isolate them. But we uh -huh. are ready to start on some wrappings here since it's, or, you know, late, you know, midwinter rackings are going to start. Uh -huh. here really soon. Uh, so that's, that's going to be the time to pick out some of these for some single bot. Uh, It'd be fun to try to try to nurse them, you know, make a real Northern Rhone white Marsan, mm -hmm. pre predominantly Marsan. Okay. Uh, if you, if you think it stands up to that, uh, but I, I think I vote for that. Mm -hmm. You know, what I think is really fun is we're starting to see, you know, several Roussans out here in the Texas marketplace from other mm -hmm. producers, but uh, Roussan and Viognier both have seemed to have caught on as yeah. far as uh, being acceptable as a single varietal um, wine to bottle. They're so good. I mean, this 18 Roussan is spectacular, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People are catching on. Incredible that the follow-up from 17, 18 just... Uh, it was almost equally as good on certain varietals. The 18 was a, a nice follow-up vintage from the 17. But we, we have a single vote for the single uh, Marsan. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I like is the... Um, um, almost caramel-like or, or uh, butterscotch-like edge to this on the end. Yeah. The finish on this is just developing, just as we're tasting it, just amazing. I think. Yeah, um, it really is. Hmm. Wow. Bobby, have you been thinking food pairings? Because I'm, I'm going back and forth now. I want to um, kind of want to jump back to the Prairie Cuvée and then the RVM, I want to jump back and forth between the two. Let's uh, do that, yeah. Yeah. Now there's a significant, um, there's a little more Viognier in the RVM than there is in the Prairie Cuvée, but there are all three varietals are in both. You know, the dark, there are, there are some distinctly darker licorice edge notes, uh, anise, darker herbal notes, on the Prairie Cuvée than on the RVM. The Prairie Cuvée has marzipan. On the yes, middle. yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that amazing edge. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely get that almond edge, like marzipan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. You know, John, the second time through these wines, somehow that your palate is sort of awake to this possibility. And it's a it's amazing, amazing tasting. Well, I still think that the Prairie Cuvée is a little um, a little heavier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, John, I, I don't want to leave being a, even there's a small amounts of it here without reminding you about the Emperor Probus in, in the year 281, transplanting a Bionier from Dalmatia to the area around Condru. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great day, I'll never forget it. 
<laughs> you had to be and talk about that. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> <Green. laughs> nice. Uh, <clears throat> you know, our our uh, cruise this summer goes right through Conroo. So I'll be. Yep. It'll be fun. Is it sold out? People were telling me they're, they're, they're trying to find tickets. And do we know anything about them? I don't think it's sold out. Um, okay. you know, we, we've got to contact our Wendy uh, over. At, I've got, hold on. I got to get the name of the, our, our travel agent if people want to contact her directly. Is it, is it on our website? It is on our website. Yeah, it is on our website. Yeah. Let's yes. just, yeah you can find it there. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <clears throat> Which that's going to be a, a phenomenal trip. Yeah, because it's it's dream vacations out of uh, it's around Dallas area, um, but our our agent for this is uh, uh, Wendy Cartwright. So and that information is on on the website. So and then we need to do um, we need to actually get together with her because um, we got to start promoting the November cruise, <clears throat> which is going to be a a brilliant you know Christmas market cruise. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm I'm getting very excited for the Roan. Yeah, with this right here, it's yeah. This is yeah. Really cool. I'll tell you what. It's in all fairness, I tell you, it's been a while since I've had the the 19 RVM. So it's kind of nice tasting it. I'm very very nice. Come. So when people are out out at the marketplace. Can find yeah. this. Yeah, this is absolutely phenomenal. Fun thing to, if you want a white and a red to serve, get the RVM and get a bottle of the GSM, and have that and try those two wines with the same dishes is is a really fun experience. Oh. Yeah, those are exquisite wines. Mm -hmm. mm. Aren't you surprised by this, John? Look, looking back. 12 or 15 years ago before you came here, would you have thought you would, you would have these, these, these rum, right, white rum tastes in, in this part of the world? You might have, but I... I No, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't have. I, it, you know, the, the red varietals didn't surprise me, but yeah, 15 years ago, would not have expected Texas to be able to produce really, you know, world-class white wines. Um, so, but here we are with world, you know, with really great wines and some great growers to, to back that up. That's absolutely fantastic. Mm. That RVM has got my, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the RVM is my favorite of the three uh, right now. And it's, 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 it's changed, evolved. In the yes, US. yes, it has. It's, it's been a, a fun thing. And it, again, need to decant, um, decant mm -hmm. the wines uh, before you, you have them. Um, and don't let, uh, a grocery store shelf price fool you. Um, you can always, always decant a wine. Again, yeah. from the yeah. um, but the other thing too, if you don't drink it all, I mean, we haven't talked about our, our little freezer trick uh, <laughs> that works out so very well. But if you've taken at least a glass out of the bottle, put the cork back in and pop it in your freezer. Um, we've done it for up to a month um, and then thought it out at room temperature and it's done perfectly well. Amazing. It's, it's yeah. almost somehow better. I mean, it's surprising. Yeah. You, you it wouldn't just, think. Yeah. yeah. Well, it chases out, you know, it slows down that oxidation to almost zero. So really does spend it. Yeah. My wife freaked out the other day when I, when I did that, mm -hmm. what are you doing? <laughs> right. Put it in the freezer. Yeah, exactly. Saving it for later. So. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, brought it out and I said it, it reduces oxidation. So mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. It's time for food. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Wow. And you can't say cassoulet. <laughs> I was, we can, yeah, I, we, we can say paella, you know. Yes, uh, you can say paella. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a Dungeness crab in season with each one of these. Uh, that's that's really my, my my vote. Well, grab it now. It's almost the end of Dungeness season. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Heather just asked, when is the San Antonio event that the Culinaria Wine celebrates? Um, that actual main event is in September. Um, so you, you've got a, a few months, um, Heather, to wait. And it is on their website, on, on the Culinaria's website, um, Heather, to wait. Okay, so Dungeness Crab with e each three thing, or each of the three wines. Well, I think oysters would be fabulous with this. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oysters, Dungeons crab, something kind of, kind of somewhat raw paella. Gosh, with these, um, yeah, that, that, that I'm there. I'm in that in that camp. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna piggyback on that thought, Doc, just as an as an aside, because with that RVM, I think would go really well with crab chipino. Uh, even though crab yeah. chipino is tomato base, um, I think uh -huh. that that RVM would hold up to that without a problem. Yeah, no. Yeah, a, a, a wonderful version of a, almost a Booyah base, but um, brilliant nonetheless. Um, okay, Bobby, your turn. What, what foods? Oh, what's been going through my mind, it's crawfish etouffee. Yeah. Oh. Um, no. <laughs> I'm thinking. Okay, now I'm missing New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of that's that's what i'm thinking like something you know that or some gumbo um just uh, it just it's making me think about uh cajun food uh, right so, um definitely a crawfish etouffee uh would go great with this yes yeah that absolutely would you know alligator would go pretty well with it too Yes. Oh, I've never tasted that. No. no? Nor have they tasted me. I mean, we're, we're, we have a mutual, <laughs> <laughs> a mutual agreement. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, I, I have to go also and talk about, uh, you know, we had years ago, we had a duck and sweet potato sausage uh, mm. made by a, mm. a, a local um, manufacturer that was just absolutely fantastic. And I, I think as a vegetable goes, sweet potato would do very well as a as an aside or in incorporating yes. a dish with these. Um, but that, just thinking about single components, like what would go well with this. Uh, uh -huh. The other thing I think would do really well with both the RVM as well as the prairie cuvee would be uh, some nice artichokes and just a little bit of garlic butter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Keep it very Ultra. simple. Really, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the Cajun place in Marble Falls, Bobby? Cajun, there's a Cajun place in Marble Falls? Yeah, there is. I, I have no clue. Yeah. There's, a, there's a place that we would go frequent in Houston mm -hmm. uh, called, um, oh man, it's, off, it's right off of close to the Galleria. And that's the place where it's the best. But uh, I don't know about Marble Falls. Okay. Somebody just mentioned homemade chicken pot pie with Roussan, and I'm going to jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and Dover Soul. Oh, how about, yes. How yeah. about Dover Soul with either any one of these three? Uh, yeah. No. That would be excellent. Okay. Bobby, what is online for next week, sir? It is a visit of Bordeaux. Uh, so we're, we're doing uh, two vintages of the Chevenois. So we're doing the 2014 vintage of Chevenois, Ooh. the 2016 vintage of the Chevenois. Uh, then we're also doing the 2014 Wilmoth. Uh, oh. so, uh, this is above I'm, average, Bobby. Can, we, can, can I get some of this? I mean, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, anytime, sir. Come on down. We'll, we'll take care of you. Just come to the winery. Okay, I'll do it. I'll give you a 20% discount if you're a wine club member. <laughs> <laughs> I can deliver as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, any wonderful news coming up for, the, um, for everybody? From the it's, winery? It's kind Are we of, not allowed to talk about the wine club shipment yet? It's calming down right now. We're, we're, we're figuring it out. We're, uh, okay. we're taking one day at a time, uh, seeing, you know, how things progress. Um, but, uh, yeah, the next wine club's right around the corner 
in February. Yeah. Um, just uh, trying to reach out to those that you know, you know, want their wines, want more wines. We got you know plenty of it. <laughs> well, I also I also would like to make mention that now you know there are some folks who wanted to know when a less busy time to come visit the winery is, and not just midweeks, but now th this month. Um, the weekends will get a little busy, but not crazy like they were over the holidays or prior. So uh, it's always a good time. And any Sunday afternoon is a beautiful afternoon on the winery patio. So um, if, you're, if you've been hesitating about coming out, come on out and have a nice glass of wine. Um, and if I'm there on Saturday, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tease you. So <laughs> yeah, he always does that with me. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Well, I think uh, with that, I think we should uh, do a little toast to all of our friends for joining us again. Thank you for making this a wonderful event. And um, may you have a great week, a good glass of wine, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.